Good morning, you guys. Welcome to lab three, or you think you know how to boil water. Today we're going to be boiling water in a Dixie cup, or trying to, and we're going to make a graph in Microsoft Excel of the data we collect while heating that water. When you sit down at this lab bench with your partners on the other side, I want one side to log into the computer and connect their lab quest to Google Chrome while the other side measures the water. Here's what I mean. Okay, one group is going to measure their water. They've got their Dixie cup. They bring their empty dry Dixie cup over to their scale. They make sure they zero their scale. That's the tear button, T-A-R-E. And find the mass of your Dixie cup. Write that down. You need to know the mass of your Dixie cup so you can subtract it later from the total mass of your Dixie cup and the water that's inside it. All right, there's our Dixie cup. We know our mass. I wrote that down. Here's my reservoir of water and a thumb wheel pipette. If you stick the tip of your thumb wheel pipette into your reservoir and roll your thumb on the thumb wheel, it will draw water into the pipette. Now the numbering on the pipette is really weird. It's backwards. Um, that's for reasons we'll teach you guys later on. But you want to make sure that the meniscus of water at the top of that thumb wheel is that dish that forms because of water tension is sitting right on the zero. All right, take your pipette and stick it in your Dixie cup. Press the button right here and your pipette will drain, except for the very last bit of water at the bottom. That's where you focus your camera back up at the top. I'm telling myself what to do, that's funny. Um, look back up here at the thumb wheel and squeeze the rest of the water out of the end of the pipette into your Dixie cup. Okay, if you do that five times, you've got 25 milliliters. Do that 10 times, you've got 50. And that's the volume that you'll want. Once you have your total volume, and you've done that 10 times, you place your Dixie cup back here and find your total mass. Of course, zero your scale again first. Subtract the mass of the Dixie cup from the total mass and you'll have your mass of water. All right. Now, while one of your groups is measuring your water, the other group on the other side of the bench is gonna be logging their lab, their lab quest into uh, their computer. Let me show you how to do that. Over here on your computer, at the very bottom on your, I'm sorry, on your lab quest, at the bottom, there's a Wi-Fi symbol. And then this number right here is your IP address for this lab quest. Notice I'm using a stylus, and these styluses are in the back of the lab quest. Just pull them out, they should be attached to a screen. Don't your, use your pens or pencils. Make sure you use the stylus. All right, so anyways, you've pressed with your stylus that Wi-Fi symbol. And then over here, you have your IP address, which you're gonna type into uh, the search, or not the search bar, but the address bar in uh, Chrome. All right, 172305912 is the unique number here that I'll type in to my computer. Now I've got the IP address for my LabQuest typed into Chrome. You should have a green circle right here, and if you don't, call your teacher over. We might, ha we might have to reboot things for you. Whenever you press play here, you're going to start collecting data with your thermometer. Word from the wise, don't stick your thermometer in the Bunsen burner flame. If you do, you will change the color of the stainless steel, so we'll know you did it. And two, you're going to melt the electronics on the inside of this thermometer. All right, back with the lab quest. There's a home button on this side. When you hit home, you'll get to the lab quest app. Using my stylus, I can... 
Well, data collection isn't where we should be. That's not what you're going to see right away. You're going to want to go to sensors, data collection, and when you get there, give yourself at least 10 minutes. So if we change this to minutes and change that to 10, you're going to want at least 10 minutes to collect data or more. Um, this may change. Your teacher may change this before the lab. All right. Um, we also, uh, it says half a minute per sample. Um, we want to take a temperature measurement every, uh, let's say, six seconds would be good. So that would be 1.10 or 1 tenth of a minute. That sounds good. So we'll have 10 samples per minute. That looks really nice. All right. We'll go OK. And then you can either hit play here or over here on your computer. You can move your mouse to the play button. All right. I'm going to hit play anyways, even though I don't have my Bunsen burner running, even though my water isn't set up on the ring stand. But this does give me an opportunity to show you your setup. Your larger ring should be about four fingers above the top of your Bunsen burner. When you light your Bunsen burner today, the flame you should have should be single, blue. No yellow flames ever for the rest of your life. And you should have 50 milliliters of water in your Dixie cup. This top ring is a safety ring. And the safety ring will keep your Dixie cup from falling over. All right. While you're collecting data, your thermometer will be in the water and stirring. And try not to touch the sides of the Dixie cup. And you're going to have to stir without touching the sides for about 10 minutes. And, or until your temperature tops out and stops going up. As soon as your temperature tops out for the water and stops going up, you get to be done. Um, and when you're done, you'll come over here with your mouse and you'll hit stop. All right, what's interesting about my silly graph is that um, I wasn't heating water and it's auto scaled to, um, this is actually less than one degree Celsius. But they auto scale, they, Lab um, Vernier, has software that auto scales even the smallest of changes in your data on your graph. The next thing you want to do is download this puppy. So that is your export or download button. We're going to download the data. Give yourself a really good name. It's going to be CSV, download. The CSV is what we want. And then down here, we should be able to open that up in Excel. And if you highlight your data and go to the insert tab and check out your recommended charts. See what comes up for that. Okay, that one looks pretty good. Your graph is going to look totally different. Your graph is going to be a rising line that plateaus when your temperature stops changing. So go ahead and click OK. And over here, there's a medical marijuana symbol. You want to click on that and turn on your axes titles. And make sure that you've got time. And in this case, it's going to be minutes on mine. If your units were seconds, make sure you've got time in seconds. Here's our temperature in Celsius and your title. And so make sure you have a really snappy title, something that doesn't have the words title, I'm sorry, something that doesn't have the words graph or chart in it. Um, when you right click on this guy, actually, my bad, if you go to file and print, while that graph is highlighted, it should print in landscape. If not, you can go over here and change it from portrait to landscape. And 
your printer should be connected. If not, we'll walk you through that. Your teacher will walk you through that or give you instructions in the lab today. All right, that about wraps it up. You've got the worksheet to finish and a graph to produce by tomorrow. And um, have a nice lab.